Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is not going to be so much a Bible study. Uh, it's going to probably at the first part of two things. You'll understand by the time I get to the second part. Um, and just so you know, my computer's been acting really wacky lately. Uh, I think they are going through my computer. Uh, it's, you know, I'm fairly computer savvy. And it's slow and it's unresponsive. And it's been um, restarting on its own. I mean, it's doing some weird stuff. And this computer is too new and too fast to be this slow. So I think they, they did, they're doing something to it or did something to it. So just in case, you, you know, something happens to me, you'll know either my uh, account got deleted or something, whatever. So, all right, well, this is going to lead up to the... Um, what's going on in the world health-wise, if you catch my drift. So, in 1979, well, before we go there, let's, let's do something else. All right, well, let's start off with DNA, this discovery of DNA. Generally, people say, uh, Crick and Watson discover DNA in the 50s, but we'll get more to that in a minute. Um, but now they're trying to say that Crick and Watson stole all the information from a Rosalind Franklin. Um, so let's take a look at Rosalind Franklin in her Wikipedia, Wikipedia article, Early Life. Franklin was born on 25 July 1920 in 50 Chepstow Villas, Notting Hill, London, into an, into an affluent and influential British Jewish family. Uh, okay, her daddy -o was a liberal merchant banker oh yeah uh her father's uncle was a home secretary of britain and was the first practicing jew to serve in the british cabinet oh yes and uh her aunt was married to the attorney general british mandate of palestine Oh, yeah, yeah, like I'm going to believe this. Well, I don't, but you can if you want. All right, so they always love to uh, take away from the real people. What can I tell you? All right, so Crick and Watson, from what I understand... They uh, discovered the double helix of the DNA molecule, and they wrote a paper in Nature in 1953. 53. Okay. From what I understand, uh, until they invented the electron microscope, they couldn't have... Uh, you know, couldn't have discovered this. And uh, Watson and Crick, uh, they were awarded the Nobel Prize in medicine or physiology, 1962, the Nobel Prize, for uh, discovering uh, basically DNA. Now, the opposite side of the DNA is RNA. So DNA works with RNA and RNA works with DNA. It's like 
two sides of the rungs of the ladder. That double helix, they call it. So, uh, but they, uh, one of them, I think it was Watson, I'm not sure. One of them uh, is on the, um, the the li the uh, list being called a racist because uh, how would you say this he believe he he noticed that there were differences in intelligence between different races if you catch my drift so let's see I'm trying to figure out which one it was but uh, yeah. Now, RNA has its role in the transfer of genetic information. So that's what RNA does. And RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. DNA stands for dexyribose nucleic acid. Oh, boy. Yeah, it was uh, Watson that uh, made... He said that there's a link between intelligence and race. Let's just leave it at that. Ooh, that sounds racist, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, so. All right, so with that in mind, they discovered the key to life. Now, somebody, um, you know who you are, uh, gave me a Bible study information idea thing. Well, it was theirs. Uh, about uh, DNA possibly being Jacob's ladder. DNA. I mean, because let's face it. God made a covenant with Abraham through Isaac, through Jacob. And people say, oh, no, no, it's for the whole world. You know, that's because they want you to ignore reading the book of Genesis. God rejected Ishmael, who was also Abraham's son. And God rejected Esau, who was Isaac's son. And the Bible says that by J um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he says, but in uh, Isaac shall thy seed be called. And then Esau was rejected, and Jacob was affirmed. So then when people come along and say, well, you know, God's opened up the doors for everybody, uh, just either they're totally ignorant or they're deceivers. And I tend to think usually they're of the latter persuasion if they're in any kind of leadership type role. And unfortunately, people listen to this stuff. God does have a chosen group of people. And it's not the Antichrist, the ones that hate Jesus, the ones that deny Jesus, the ones that are waiting for their own Messiah to come. It's not them, I'll guarantee you. But the, my point is, that was in the 50s. Okay? Now, I have found... To my experience, from what I understand, not that I'm always right, but that in um, they usually have 20 years of science ahead of what they show us. If they show you something, they usually have 20 years of technological, technological background that they're not showing you. They're just showing you the stuff from 20 years ago. But in 1979, they had a movie that was called Parts, The Clonus Horror. Clone Us. Clonus. Yes, it was about, uh, it was about cloning. Let me read you a little bit about what Wikipedia says. Uh, 79 science fiction horror film uh, about an isolated community where clones 
our bread to serve to be uh, parts, body parts for, uh, you know, the, the billionaires and the, uh, you know, the most wealthy, powerful people in the world. Body parts. Oh, you know, like uh, I heard Dick Cheney, somebody said that Dick Cheney uh, had four heart replacements. Other people say, nope, that's impossible. Dick Cheney doesn't have a heart. What can I tell you? But he had four heart, heart uh, replacement surgeries. Now, they love to uh, have a movie about what they're either capable of doing or planning on doing or have done my opinion so here it is your uh, political leaders uh, and your very wealthy billionaires they put together this uh, cloning facility and they're putting clones together hey you drank your liver to death no problem we got your clone right over here we'll just uh, you know harvest a new liver for you no problem oh your lungs were uh, destroyed from uh, smoking no problem we got a brand new set of lungs right over here pristine condition so the um, and there was another movie called the island which is basically along the same lines so but um, it says that the uh, the clones were uh, cloned for you know replacement parts for what they call the elite but obviously they're kept in a compound away from uh, you know regular world you know from everybody else they don't want people to know this place exhibit you know exists so they uh you know it's a compound and then somebody escapes the uh compound and uh it's found uh by a journalist and he starts investigating you know because here it is this guy is you know it's an identical clone to somebody rich or famous or whatever and uh but uh I don't know they uh, they have uh, their hired guns kill all the people that are involved in finding out about all those stuff because they want to keep this under wraps so that's the whole purpose of this thing so you know and they always promise the clones Oh yeah, well after you know we've trained you and done this and that and the other, and we're gonna we're gonna let you uh, go into the the real world. You'll be able to go to America. So yeah, no, that's not how it works. So that was in 1979. Well, guess what? And like I mentioned, uh, The Island, a movie, was a 2005 film, which is along basically along the same lines. Matter of fact, the people that put out the clone is horror, clone us, uh, sued The Island for copyright infringement or whatever, you know. Hey, you stole our idea and you, you know, put out a movie about it. So we want some money. Give us some money which they did they paid him they gave him some money so all right so here is the deal now according to science the first recorded uh, instance publicly of a cloned mammal was in 1996 it was a female domestic sheep and allegedly the first mammal cloned from an adult 
somatic cell using the process of nuclear transfer. Don't ask me, I didn't go that far in biology. And her name was called Dolly. What was that song? Hello, Dolly. Hello, Dolly. Uh, yeah, and supposedly was named after Dolly Parton. Um, uh, it was cloned in Scotland. It was cloned in Scotland. Um, the by the biotechnology company PPL Therapeutics near Edinburgh, and uh, the Ministry of Agriculture. And uh, let's see. And she died on in 2003. So basically, it was about seven years old. Some interesting facts. Dolly had three mothers. One provided the egg, another the DNA, and a third carried the cloned embryo to term. Uh, somatic cell nuclear transfer where the cell nucleus from an adult cell is transferred into an unfertilized o coat developing egg cell that had its cell nucleus removed. Uh, the hybrid cell is then stimulated to divide by an electric shock, and then it develops into a blitocyst, where it is implanted into a surrogate mother. Um, and supposedly they named it... Uh, Dolly because the they got the um, the cell used for the donor for the cloning of Dolly was taped from a from a mammillary gland uh, in modern slang that would be a woman's boobs and uh, they said uh, he Wilmot who was one of the guys involved said quote Dolly is derived from a mammillary gland cell and we couldn't think of a more impressive pair of Mammillary glands than Dolly pardons, unquote. So that's why they named it uh, Dolly. I didn't even know that until just now. So sometimes it's better not to know things, you know. Um, let's see. Usually a... They have a lifespan of 11 to 12 years, but... Dolly only lived, okay, six and a half years. So, uh, they weren't sure, supposedly, that uh, it was a genetic defect that she died of or what. But you know what? Let me tell you something. If you can clone a sheep, absolutely, positively, I am sure that you could clone people. Now, I don't know how many of you watch the Munsters, but I used to watch Munsters as a kid. I prefer the Adams Family, but I would watch the Munsters. I think it was like every other week they would show a different episode at a certain time of the day. They were doing reruns. But uh, they had Al Lewis. Yeah, he was part of the tribe. He was the uh, grandpa Munster. Boy, look at him sideways. What a schnoz. I mean, he could have he could have been Pinocchio's daddy. But I remember once he made a uh now this you gotta realize this is like in the 60s, early 60s. Uh Grandpa Munster said, Ah, oh, villagers, you know, you can't live with them and you can't get body parts without them. Ha ha ha. That yeah, that was so funny. Little did I know that uh yeah yeah can't get body parts without the villagers well now they can i guess so after they cloned dolly which is what they only told us about uh everything was well you know it's not ethical to do this kind of stuff and then you don't hear nothing about it anymore yeah so they discovered DNA in the 50s. 79, they have a cloning movie. 96, they tell us they have a clone. Remember, 
20 years ahead of what they're telling us? I wonder. So why am I talking about all this stuff? Well, uh, you got to listen to part two. I don't want to make this a, I want to break this up into two parts. I really do. Uh, reason being, uh, talking about certain stuff can really make problems. Uh, if I do a part two, uh, look on the community page. I might put the part two on uh, archive.org. I might do that because it's going to cover some stuff that uh, you know who is not going to like. So, and I'd like to keep my channel up as long as I possibly can. And, um, you know, what can I tell you? But there's a reason why I'm going through all this. There's a big reason. And it has to do with what... Uh, what's been going around and the uh, the passport travel passports that they're talking about if you catch my drift so just keep that in mind because there's a there's a reason why I'm mentioning all this stuff yeah all right well um, like I said this really isn't a Bible study but it makes me wonder, really makes me wonder what, uh, how much stuff they actually have that they're not telling us about. So uh, I wouldn't suggest watching that Clonus movie, but, you know, I never really watched it. I saw, I don't know, a little bit of it. You know, I never... You know, you go over to people's houses and they got movies on or you're flipping through the channels and you see something and then you maybe watch for 15, 20 minutes or whatever. Uh, sometimes I watch stuff just to see where they're trying to push herd the cattle, so to speak. And that's the only reason I do it. But I cannot, absolutely cannot believe all the witchcraft and magic and stuff on television, all the... I mean, it's just unbelievable. And, um, you know, they uh, make it sound like we're a bunch of idiots for not getting involved with magic. But let me tell you something, people. Those of you that have children, you are responsible for training your children, not the uh, 501c3 uh, pastors that are only worried about passing that collection plate around. No, the parents are. Matter of fact, you're better off not sending your kids to a so-called business called a church. I, I'm, I'm so, you know, those that listen to me for a while uh, know exactly how I feel about all that stuff. But, uh you know, parents are responsible. You send your kids to school. They're taught evolution from day one. Uh, now they're telling the kids to spy on their parents. You know, and even offering them rewards for turning in their parents. It's just, you know, these people that are in charge of all this stuff, they're not amateurs. And, you know, Jesus even warned us that our enemies, our foes would be they of our own household. And, you know, the more I study the Bible, the more I realize just how true it is. Uh, it's just unbelievable. And there's a lot of stuff I know that I don't teach uh, just because... There's other things I consider far more important. But uh, this is, I consider this important. But it's going, it won't come together until it's you hear part two. And once you hear part two, and part two will be a short part, I'm pretty sure. And I'm going to supply concrete proof. 
But it's, uh, yeah, I honestly think they're trying to uh, get rid of some of the people because all they are is a drain on society, if you know what I'm saying. You know, having to make those payments every month to uh, those that aren't, aren't uh, producing. Yeah. So what can I tell you? All right, everybody, take care and uh, all blessings, praise, glory and honor to Jesus. Please stick around for part two. In Jesus' name, amen.